Hello, it's Jay here again and welcome to another tutorial. So, we're continuing on with the splash screen script and in this lesson we're going to deal with initialization. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is come here above the void start and we're going to create a void awake. We'll open and close brackets, we'll open and close again. And that's because the line of code I'm going to put in this function, I want to make sure is set first before we do anything else. So I'm going to put it in a void awake block. So with that said, let's call the underscore and we want the splash screen and it's the uh, fade value. And we're going to make that equal to zero. We'll close the line off into the comments fade value equals zero on startup now don't worry about this value we're going to go over how it's going to work how we're going to increase it and decrease it and also what it's going to do, how it's going to affect the scene in later videos. Basically, when we come to fill out these two functions and the on GUI. So, please don't worry if you don't understand anything we're doing in these lessons up to yet because it will be explained, as I said, in a later video. Once we actually come to using all these variables. Now, with that said, let's come inside the void start and we can put the rest of the code actually in void start or at least the initialization. So let's come inside there and we're going to say cursor dot visible. I'm going to set that equal to false. So we'll close the line off and we'll get that into the comments. And we're going to say set the cursor and we'll say visible state to false. So that means once the game starts, we will not be able to see the mouse cursor. And we also want to lock the cursor. So we'll say cursor dot and we want lock state. And we're going to say it's going to be equal to cursor lock mode. And we want the dot locked. We'll close the line off into the comments and we'll just say and lock the cursor. I'll just save that there for a moment. So the cursor will be locked and plus it will not be visible. Now there's a reason for this. And that is because, and it's a good time to mention it now, is this game is going to be for joypad only. We're going to have no mouse or keyboard inputs in this game. So the menus, the game itself is all going to be joypad controlled. So I hope that's okay with all of you. I... Uh, I wanted to do that because I wanted to do something a little bit different for this series. So I thought a joypad only game. Um, joypads tend to be the controller of choice as you all know for fighting games. So it made sense to do it for this series. So with that said, let's continue on. And we're going to say, and we'll use um, underscore and we want splash screen audio and it's going to be equal to the audio source so we need to get component we'll open it and close brackets now pay attention to what type of brackets I am using audio source we'll come to the end we'll open and close we'll close the line off into the comments so we'll say Splash screen audio equals the 
audio source. So now, any time that we need to access the audio component, the audio source component, we can just call this variable. And that's what we're going to do now. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to say splash screen audio. And we want dot volume. And we're going to make this equal to zero. We'll close the line off into the comments. Audio volume equals zero on startup. We'll come to the next line. And this is because we're going to have the audio fade in and fade back out during the splash screen. And it's going to fade along with the text. So with that said, let's come to the next line and we'll continue on. We want the underscore splash screen audio again, dot clip. And the clip we want is the splash screen music. We'll close the line off into the comments. So let's, in fact, put a capital A. Audio clip equals splash screen music. Again, the next line. So splash screen audio dot loop. We're going to set to true. So the music continues to play. We'll close the line off. Comment set audio to loop. And finally, we actually want to play the music. So splash screen audio dot play. We'll open and close brackets, we'll close the line off, and in the comments we'll just say play audio. And we'll create a line break, and we'll come below here, and we're going to say splash, and it's going to be splash screen, and it's the controller that we want. It's going to equal... And we want splash screen. So we're actually referencing this here. So we're using this naming convention, splash screen controller. It's going to be equal to the script. We'll come to the end of the line there. We're going to say dot splash screen controller with the capital. This isn't the underscore because this now is what we're affecting. Splash screen controller. We'll come to the end of the line again. Dot splash screen fade in. We'll close the line off and in fact let's break this up. Let's enter yeah we'll enter after the equal sign. Enter the comments and we're going to say state equals we'll come to the line below now and we'll say fade in on start up and the reason for this is because in the next video we're going to create a switch block which acts like a um, a bit like a mini finite state machine just to handle these two functions here again don't worry if this doesn't make sense or any of this that will be explained actually in the very next lesson and let's come here and let's have one final line of code so we're going to say start core routine we'll open and close brackets we'll close the line off and this is going to contain the actual naming convention for our little switch block. So let's save that off there. We'll come to console. So as you can see, it says it takes no arguments. So we're going to come inside the brackets and put the little speech marks. 
splash screen uh, let's just say manager let's come to the comments and we'll say start splash screen manager function let's save that off there let's downsize mono develop so again we have a three variables this time that are not being used but don't worry we'll be using those in the coming lesson now we have to make sure that when we create the switch block in the next lesson that we use the naming convention we've used here so i think we'll leave it here for this video because now we have all the code necessary for the initialization both in the void awake and void start so i think this is a good time to end this video and in the next lesson we'll continue on so i hope you enjoyed this video i hope to see you next time and until then as always bye for now